as the events of life unfold before our very eyes at a very frightening pace, and as the demands of life only ever seem to be increasing, and as the pressures that the average Muslim of the 21st century finds himself and herself exposed to, it is not uncommon to hear people, Muslims, complaining of weak iman. They say, my iman has become so weak. And much like everything else in life, if a person's iman, his faith, her faith is not serviced, and monitored, and refreshed and revived on a regular basis, much like everything else in life, it will wear away until very little of it remains. For this reason, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said as Al-Hakim narrates in his Mustadrak on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. He said, إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَيَخْلَقُ فِي جَوْفِ أَحَدِكُمْ كَمَا يَخْلَقُ الثَّوْبِ يَعْنِي كَمَا يَبَلَ الثَّوْبِ فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ he said, Iman that is found within the hearts of people, it wears away. The same way that the clothes that you wear, wear away. He said, so always ask Allah to renew and replenish the Iman that is within you. I beg Allah Almighty to renew the Iman that is within us. And there are many techniques that a Muslim could employ in order to raise his Iman. And to experience those beautiful days of being close to Allah that perhaps a lot of us are no longer are no longer experiencing. Those techniques are many. However, today we're going to be speaking about just one of those methods. Perhaps the chief of all methods. A method that is so significant that if it is missing, every other effort in order to raise a person's iman will fail. What technique is this? This is the method of reintroducing ourselves to Allah Almighty. Who is Allah? If any one of us here today was to be asked to give a description with regards to he or her whom he loves the most in the life of this world, we would be able to give a very elaborate and precise and long description. Hours upon hours. We would describe his talk or her talk, her walk, her favorite food, her favorite drink, her favorite hobbies, and so on. If however we were to ask the very same individual to give us a description of Allah, the Lord whom he claims he loves the most, and adores the most, and worships day in, day out, when we ask him to give a description of Allah, who is Allah, with only two minutes, not hours, just two minutes, with the condition that you're not allowed to repeat yourself. A lot of us struggle. And then we ask the question, why is my iman so low? The answer many times is so obvious, we don't really know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, who is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Al-Malik Al-Quddus. And it is a very difficult task when Al-Faqir, the one who is poor, like us human beings, tries to give a description of Al-Ghani, Allah the most rich. It is difficult when Al-Da'if, the most weak, tries to give a description of Al-Qawi, Allah the most powerful. It is difficult. And therefore to deal with this issue, we will return back to the words of Allah Himself. And we will now introduce the Creator through the words of the Creator Himself. Allah is about to introduce Himself to humanity. What does He say? Surah Al-Hashr, Allah Almighty says, Hu Allah, He is Allah. Alladhi la ilaha illahu, besides whom none has the right to be worshipped. Al-Malik, the King. Al-Quddus, the pure. As-Salam, the one who is free from all defects. Al-Mu'min, the giver of security. Al-Aziz, the most mighty. Al-Jabbar, the compeller. Al-Mutakabbir, the supreme. 
سبحان الله عما يشركون هاي is الله above everything that they associate with him هو الله he is الله الخالق the creator البارئ the inventor المصور the giver of forms له الأسماء الحسنى to him belongs the most perfect of all names يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم everything in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah and he is the most mighty the most wise يا الله هل تعلم له سمية do you know anybody who shares even one of these characteristics with Allah who is Allah come with me to chapter 6 of the Quran surah al-an'am Allah says وعنده مفاتح الغيب وعنده مفاتح الغيب لا يعلمها إلا هو He has the keys to the unseen No one knows them except him ويعلم ما في البر والبحر And he knows everything that is on land And everything that is within the sea وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها And there isn't a single leaf that falls from any tree Except that Allah has knowledge of it ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض and there isn't even a grain within the darknesses of the land. وَلَا رَطُبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ Nor is there anything moist or anything that is solid. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except that Allah has knowledge of it, it is written within a clear record. لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ Wallahi dear brothers and sisters, we have not recognized Allah as He deserves to be recognized. Who is Allah? We want to refresh our iman. We want to be attached to our Creator. We want to fear nobody but Him. We want to please none other than Him. So who is Allah? Come with me to Surah Al-Hadid, chapter 57 of the Qur'an, where Allah, He says, introducing Himself to us. له ملك السماوات والأرض. He is Allah who has the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. يُحْيِي ويميت, He alone is the one who gives life and death. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And he is able to do whatever he wishes. هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ He is the first and the last. وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ And the outward and the inward. وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And he has knowledge of all things. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ He is Allah. Who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he established himself on the throne. يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا He knows everything that comes out of the earth and everything that goes into the earth. وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا And he has knowledge of everything that goes up into the heavens and everything that comes down from the sky. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ And he is with you wherever you may be. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرًا Allah Almighty sees everything that you do. This is Allah. When a person struggles to describe Allah, go back to the words of Allah. This is Allah. Today, dear brothers and sisters, I wish for us to experience a sense of awe and veneration and majesty at the greatness of this Lord whom we worship. I wish for our hearts to tremble at the sovereignty of this Creator whom we bow and prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is Allah? Who is Allah? He is that Lord who has never slept since time immemorial. Allah has never slept and He will never sleep. Thus Muslim narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنَامْ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ أَنْ يَنَامْ يَخْفِدُ الْقِسْطَ وَيَرْفَعُهُ يرفع إليه عمل الليل قبل عمل النهار وعمل النهار قبل عمل الليل حجابه النور لو كشفه لأحرقت سبحات وجهه من تها إليه بصره من خلقه He said Allah does not sleep and it is not befitting for Allah to sleep Allah lowers justice and he raises it the actions of the night are raised to him before the actions of the day. And the actions of the day are raised to him before the actions of the night. His veil, his veil is made out of light. In other narrations, his veil is made out of fire. If Allah was to remove that veil, 
the splendor and glory of his face would destroy and burn everything in creation. This is Allah. You and I, look at how we behave when we are sleepy, when we are deprived of sleep after 24 hours, after 24 hours. We are unable to make correct decisions. And our memory begins to fail. After the passage of around 32 or so hours without sleep, you become very emotional. And your health now is generally at risk. After the passage of 48 hours, as the doctors they say, without sleep, you begin to experience blackouts without you even realizing your body needs to sleep. After the passage of around 72 hours without sleep, you're now, your mind is now prepared to offer hallucinations. You now think that you are seeing things, you're not seeing them, and carrying out the simplest of tasks becomes very difficult. You need to sleep. And in extreme scenarios, lack of sleep may even bring a person to his grave. As for Allah, who is the first, he has no beginning, and the last, he will have no end. Despite the passage of these infinite years, Allah has never slept. This is Allah. Imagine the situation where several people are trying to converse with you at the same time. From the left and the right and in front of you, you can't make up what they are saying. You can't make out what they are saying. What about 10 people speaking to you at the same time? Or a hundred or a thousand, we can't do it. And that is why we employ secretaries. To do the hard work, we've only got one set of ears and one set of hands. As for Allah, as for Allah, He is called upon by the whole of mankind. And He is called upon by the jinn, by the animals, by the insects and creatures. Allah is called upon by the shayateen. Allah is called upon by the Muslim and non-Muslim. Allah is called upon by the soft and the hard. Allah is called upon by the inhabitants of the earth, the inhabitants of the ocean, those who swim in the sea. Allah Almighty hears them all. And He responds to them all. And He is able to, discern, to, to differentiate this call from that call. And thus our mother Aisha, she would say, Alhamdulillahi ladhi wasi'a sam'uhu al-aswat. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose hearing encompasses all voices. Praise be to Allah, whose hearing encompasses all voices. Yas'aluhu man fi samawati wal ard. Allah says, everything in the heavens and the earth begs of me. Kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'in. Every day Allah is engaged in a different matter. Every day Allah is engaged in an affair. What are these shu'un, these affairs? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمِن شَأْنِهِ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ ذَنْبَ وَأَنْ يُفَرِّجَ كَرْبَ وَأَنْ يَرْفَعَ قَوْمَ وَيَضَحَ آخَرِينَ from the affairs of Allah that he busies himself with, from the matters that Allah Almighty engages in, is a sin that he pardons. A difficulty that he removes. A nation that he elevates. And a nation that he lowers. La ilaha illallah. I bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the description of just one of Allah Almighty's creation. He is an angel. The chief of the angels. Angel Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him in his true angelic form. Ahmed narrates in his Musnad that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion, he said, رَأَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جِبْرِيلَ فِي صُورَتِهِ رَأَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَى صُورَتِهِ لَهُ سِتُّ مِئَةِ جَنَاحٍ كُلُّ جَنَاحٍ مِنْهَا قَدْ سَدَّ الْأُفُقِ يسقط من جناحه من التهاويل والدر والياقوت ما الله به عليم. He says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Angel Jibreel in his true angelic form. And he had no less than 600 wings. And every one of those wings was huge enough to fill the horizon and cover the skies. One wing spread out covers every cloud, covers every star, covers the sun and the moon, covers every inch of that blue sky that we see. One wing. What then can you make of 600 wings? And if this is the majesty of just one of Allah Almighty's creation, what then can you make of the beauty and the majesty of the Creator Himself? La ilaha illallah. I bring to your attention, dear brothers and sisters, yet a second creation from Allah Almighty. 
This is the description of one of the seven angels who are carrying the throne of Allah. Abi Dawood narrates in his sunnah on the authority of Jabir that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أُذِنَ لِي أَنْ أُحَدِّثَ عَنْ مَلَكٍ مِنْ مَلَائِكَةِ اللَّهِ مِنْ حَمَلَةِ الْعَرْشِ مَا بَيْنَ شَحْمَةِ أُذُنِهِ وَعَاتِقِهِ مَسِيرَةُ سَبْعِمِئَةِ عَامٍ He said alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah has given me permission to give you, O Muslims, a description of just one of the seven angels that are carrying the throne of Allah. He said the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is the distance of 700 years worth of travel. If that is the distance between his ear and his shoulder, a hand span of a distance for us human beings, what then about the size of the rest of this angel? What then about the enormity of the rest of his body? If this is the size of one of the seven angels who are carrying the throne of Allah, what then about the enormity of the throne of Allah itself? And if this is the size of the throne of Allah, what then about the Lord, the Lord and the King of that throne? We have truly not worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recognized Him as He deserves to be recognized. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Hajj, we turn to that chapter now. Allah Almighty has a question that He poses to the whole of humanity. Allah asks, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't you see, O people, that everything in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ And so does the sun and so does the moon. وَالنُّجُومُ وَالْجِبَالُ And so do the stars and so do the mountains. وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابُ And so do the trees and so do the moving creatures. وَكَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ And so do many people. وَكَثِيرٌ حَقَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَذَابِ And many people will be punished, Ya Allah. Isn't that amazing? From all of creation that's in existence, they are all in submission, all in sujood to Allah, whether we see it or realize it or not. And the only exception is a minority who happen to be from the weakest of all creation. He is man. He and the jinn, they refuse to prostrate to Allah. But even then, Allah Almighty says something remarkable about them in Surah Al-Ra'd. He says, He says, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَظِلَالُهُمْ وَظِلَالُهُمْ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ He says, everything in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah willingly or unwillingly and so do their shadows. Ya Allah, the shadows are in prostration to Allah. So whether we do sujood to Him or we don't, our shadows have not consulted us. They have not taken a second opinion from us. They don't care what we think. They have already decided to prostrate to Allah. ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ This is Allah, your Lord, the truth. This is Allah. It is however on the day of judgment. Where it will become in the clearest ways. It will become apparent in the clearest of ways, the starkest of ways, that kingdom only ever belonged to Allah the Majestic. It will become apparent there. Allah Almighty, He says, describing the first blowing of the horn that will bring an end to creation as we know it today, before the beginning of the day of judgment, He says, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ the first blowing of the horn will take place and everything in the heavens and the earth will die except those whom Allah Almighty makes an exception. Everything will die. Silence. No more sounds to be heard. No more backstabbing. No more showing off. No more pride. No more lying. No more spite and malice. No more gossiping. No more boasting. No more sounds. Absolute silence. It will only be the voice of one. And that is the voice of the Creator, Ar-Rahman. Where he will ask a question and no one will answer. So he will answer it himself. He will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Who does kingdom belong to today? No one will answer. No one is around. Everyone is dead. So Allah will answer Himself. 
لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ Kingdom belongs to Allah, the one, the compeller. Muslim narrates on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَطْوِ اللَّهُ السَّمَوَاتِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ يَأْخُذُهُنَّ بِيَدِهِ الْيُمْنَى ثُمَّ يَقُولُ أَنَا الْمَلِكِ أَنَا الْمَلِكِ أَيْنَ الْجَبَّارُونَ أَيْنَ الْمُتَكَبِّرُونَ ثُمَّ يَأْخُذُ الْأَرَاضِينَ فِي يَدِهِ الْأُخْرَى ثُمَّ يَقُولُ أَنَا الْمَلِكِ أين الجبارون؟ أين المتكبرون؟ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said on the day of judgment, Allah will wrap up the seven heavens. Allah will wrap them up like a scroll, and He will place them in His right hand, and He will say, "I am the King. I am the King. Where are the tyrants? Where are the arrogant?" Then Allah will wrap up the earth, placing it in His other hand. Then He will say, "I am the King. Where are the tyrants?" Where are the arrogant? La ilaha illallah. Then imagine with me, dear brothers and sisters, and picture the enormity, the scene of Yawm Al-Qiyamah after the second blowing of the horn. When humanity in their billions have emerged from their graves, and they stand all together, waiting for the judgment, waiting for the arrival of the King Al-Qahar, Allah. And then you look above you and the sky begins to crack open as if they are doors. وَيَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ السَّمَاءُ بِالْغَمَامِ وَنُزِّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ تَنْزِيلَ Allah says on that day when the heavens will begin to crack open and clouds will emerge from them, smoke will emerge and the angels will begin to descend rank after rank. The angels are now joining us on the plane of resurrection in preparation of the arrival, in preparation for the arrival of Allah Al-Qahar, the Compeller. And then when the time is suitable, and when the scene is set, and everyone is ready, and the judgment is about to begin, Allah Almighty finally arrives, arrives in a manner that befits His majesty and glory. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظُلَلٍ مِّنَ الْغَمَامِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah will come, Allah says in chapter 2 of the Qur'an, He will come within the shadows of clouds and along with the angels as well. And on that day, it will be a day where no man will have any power to help anybody else. وَالْمُلْكُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ And kingdom on that day and the command will belong purely to Allah. This is Allah, dear brothers and sisters. ذَٰلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ This is your Lord Allah, the truth. That is Allah. Now that you and I have recognized how great this Creator is, within the universe, the sensitive question now poses itself. How great is Allah Almighty within your heart? A Muslim stops in his tracks when urged to commit a sin, having realized Allah is great. Allah is azim. Allah is glorified. I cannot do this. The wakeful Muslim does not say that the sin is small, but he says, my Lord is huge, my Lord is great. The wakeful Muslim does not look at the smallness of the crime, but he remembers the enormity of the Lord. There was a man who was once alone with an Arab Bedouin woman, and this was narrated by Al-Bayhaqi in his Shu'abul Iman. And he tried seducing her to commit the haram with him. But she was a pious woman, she resisted. She said to him, فَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ أَمَا لَكَ زَاجِرٌ مِنْ كَرَمْ أَمَا لَكَ نَاهٍ مِنْ دِينٍ She said to him, what is wrong with you, you vile man? Don't you have manners? Don't you have any honor? Don't you have deen to protect you from what you are asking me to do? He said to her jokingly, ما يرانا إلا الكواكب He said to her, don't worry, nobody can see us. Nobody can see us except the planets. But her response was remarkable. She said, وَأَيْنَ مُكَوْكِبُهَا But where is the one who placed them there? You say to me, let's do the haram because no one can see us. Only the planets, where is the one who placed them there? This in conclusion, dear brothers and sisters, is why we choose the likes of these topics. An introduction to Allah from time to time, so that when a sin presents itself to you, and it says, here I am, I'm free, 
No one is looking. Go for it. You respond with courage and power and determination and you say, but where is Allah? Where is Allah? Speak to yourself, dear brother. Speak to yourself, dear sister. Interrogate your soul. Say to yourself, oh my soul, if you had disobeyed Allah Almighty whilst thinking that He couldn't see you, then how great was your disbelief in Allah? But oh my soul, if you disobeyed Allah Almighty whilst knowing that He can see you, then how little was your shyness of Allah? O oh my soul, why have you made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most insignificant of all observers? O oh my soul, why are you running away? Why are you trying to hide whilst you know that the sky is his sky and the land is his land and the kingdom is his kingdom and your body and your property are both his? Where are you trying to go, O oh my soul? O oh my soul, why aren't you shy of Allah? Oh my soul, what will you say if Allah Almighty asks you on the day of judgment, was I not worthy of your glorification? Was I not worthy of being glorified? Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, glorify Allah. Sell that business that profits from the haram and glorify Allah. Take care of the five pillars of Islam. Perfect your five salawat as much as you can. Glorify Allah. Remove the intoxicant from your lungs. Remove the intoxicant from your pocket. Remove it from the shelves of your store. Glorify Allah. Remove that impermissible relationship that you are still struggling with once and for all. Glorify Allah. Create a vision in your life. Don't lead an average life. A strategy for the hereafter. What is your contribution to deen? Glorify Allah. I ask Allah Almighty, that the same way that He is the greatest within the heavens and the earth, to make Him the greatest within our hearts and our lives as well.